back to the Free Field Training. We're going to be talking about when to not call 911. I've been a cop for 14 years. Not that that should matter too much because a lot of this stuff is common sense. But in case you don't have common sense, we're going to talk about it today. Now, I'd like to also mention the sponsor of today's video, which is Xavier Wells, who wrote this book called Expert Witness, A Civilian Guide to Effective Crime Reporting. And he contacted me talking about wanting to promote his book on my channel. And I said, oh, you know what would be great is there's lots of of good stuff in here about how to give descriptions of people, good training information. And then I came across this chapter uh, called When to Not Call 911, Chapter 5, and I started laughing out loud. So I figured this was going to be the topic of a very entertaining video for all of you. So, um, hold on a second. Uh, I forgot we're on YouTube. Hold up a second. You, you can't... You can't be on YouTube looking all professional in a, in a polo shirt while making a joke video. Everybody knows you gotta, you gotta wear a t-shirt that's at least one size too small and a plate carrier or no one will believe you're serious. And there's nothing more serious than when you shouldn't be calling 911. So let's get right into it. 911 is for emergencies. Hold on a second. I know it's going to be a shock for a lot of people who also don't understand that emergency rooms are for emergencies. You know when we put on the side of the card it says emergency 911 or it says emergency dial 911? That's not a suggestion. It's for emergencies only. Just like the emergency room. You don't go to the emergency room when you have a headache. Oh wait, no, people do that. Never mind. Let's start off with uh, number one, reasons not to dial 911. Property disputes. And uh, Xavier says these can take many forms and almost always end up being a civil issue, meaning the police have no jurisdiction to remedy the situation in any way. So let's talk about that for a second. Property disputes. Things like, I loaned my lawnmower to my neighbor, and now he went on vacation and I can't get it back. What am I supposed to do? Shoot at his garage? You want me to boot the door open and get the lawnmower out of there? It's not happening. Don't call 911 for that. Also, where your property line is, somebody mowing their lawn and they, they put grass on your lawn? No. Also, don't call 911 because on the 5th of July, there's bottle rocket pieces in your yard. That's what happens on the 4th of July everywhere. Whether fireworks are legal or not, there's going to be fireworks flying over your house. They're going to detonate, and some of them are going to fall on your lawn. I'm not taking a report for that, and neither is anybody else who knows what they're doing anywhere else in the country. If it's a matter that's about property lines or a trash on the ground or anything else, there are separate agencies that are designed to deal with that. If you have a property line dispute, you need to call the county assessor's office, whoever deals with property lines in your, in your area. You don't call the police. You definitely don't call on 911 because that's not something that I need to turn the cherries and berries on and drive over there for right now. Noise complaints. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you can hear your neighbor's stereo from down the block, sure, call the police. We'd still prefer you not call on 911. There's probably a non-emergency number for that in your area, but sure, call the police 2 o'clock in the morning. But if your neighbor has a live band, especially if it's a mariachi band and it's a 16-year-old little girl's party, hang it up, bro. Don't call 911. I can't tell the live band to turn it down. So you're wasting your time dialing 911. Also, I swear to God, I swear to God, I mm, do not call on the quinceanera and say that someone was over there shooting and they're making loud noise. Saying they're over there shooting is not going to get me to go there and make them shut the mariachi band off. It's just going to make you look like a jerk. 3 a.m., that's one thing. Almost everywhere has an ordinance that separates between times people can make loud noise and times people can't make loud noise. And if your place, if the place that you live doesn't have such an ordinance, talk to your alderman and have it made. But don't call the police about it because there's nothing we can do. If it's not illegal, I can't write a ticket for it, I can't arrest somebody for it, and I'm sure as hell I'm not going to shoot the stereo, don't call 911 about it. Animal complaints. Here's a big shocker for people. Animal complaints should be directed toward animal control. Now, Xavier doesn't go into this here. I don't think he does. But, uh... You really shouldn't call because Facebook goes out either, or Twitter, or Instagram, or even my beloved YouTube. Do not call 911 because your internet service is out, or because the power's out, or because the water's out. 
unless water is spurting out of the ground in front of your house, you don't need to call anybody about a utility going out except that utility. And if water is spurting up out of the ground, unless it's 2 o'clock in the morning and the water department's not answering, there's no reason to call the police at all, let alone to call them on 911. This is not a life-threatening emergency. I ooh. Facebook being out? People, pretend like it's 1994 and just don't go on Facebook for three hours. I'm sure it's coming back. It's a multi-billion dollar company. I'm sure they're going to get it back up in no time. Crashes with no injuries. So, this depends state to state, but almost never should you be calling 911 because you had a crash with no injuries. It's probably not an emergency number, but even if you do, understand this. If you scrape your car in a parking lot, hitting a pole, one, you should be more embarrassed than thinking that that's an emergency. And two, there's probably nothing the police can do about it unless you're going to Make a police report to make an insurance claim, which most insurance companies don't require if you scrape your car into a pole. Also, think long and hard about calling the police, making a police report, and then making an insurance claim if you get into a one-car accident with a pole, because in all likelihood, your rates are going to skyrocket if you make that claim. You may want to take it over to like a, a collision place, your local collision place, or like a big collision place like Gerber or something. See how much it costs, especially if it's a slightly older car, which lots of people call 911 because they hit the pull what their car is. See if maybe, you know, you could just get a new bumper cover and have it painted. Maybe it costs you $1,000 instead of taking the big hit in three hours of my life for no reason. And either way, if no one's injured and no one's going to be injured, don't call 911. Oh, here's a good one. Domestic arguments. Listen. You're getting hurt, that's one thing. You gotta get your stuff out of the house and the person's not letting you come in and get your stuff, I don't mind coming over and mediating that. You're moving out, you wanna extricate yourself from the situation, you need to get your work clothes, fine, I'll go. Hey listen, she's gotta get her work clothes or he's gotta get his work clothes, okay? Do not call 911 because your significant other or your kid won't give you the remote control. If I had a dollar every time somebody called 911 in this country because their kid wouldn't give them the remote control or their husband or wife wouldn't give them the remote control, I could retire to my own private island tomorrow. Oh, and that segues right into juvenile discipline. Listen, I know your, your kid's teacher has probably told you that you're not allowed to touch your kid and you can't yell at your kid and you can't call them names and basically you can't do anything but tell them what to do and when they don't do it, shrug your shoulders and be like, I don't know, I guess I'll call the government. That's not the way it works in the real world. Anywhere. Nowhere in the world does it work like that. And I'm going to tell you something. If your kid won't clean their room or they won't go to school and you call 911, expect to, at least on the inside, be laughed at. And if you go to the right place and get the right cop, openly laughed at because you can't get your kid's butt into your car to take them to school or to walk them outside and put them on the school bus. That's a you problem, not a government problem. It's going to really become a you problem if you start this when they're 11 or 9. My 9-year-old won't go to school. Nobody cares. That's on you. They're 9. They're 9. What have you messed up between 0 and 9 to the where, point at 9, you can't be like, put your clothes on, get your butt on the school bus, they go, no! And you don't have some recourse for that. Right? Sometimes I think there should be a license to have kids. Monetary disputes in a business. And that's the last point for this. I don't care if the business has a policy about returns. I don't care if that policy is written. I don't care if they promised you something. I don't care if the car dealership said they would give you $1,500 back, but you only got a check for $700. All of that's a civil matter. All of it. If it has to do with money and money being paid, in all likelihood, it's a civil matter. There's two circumstances where it's not. One is where you owe a business money. They gave you something you didn't pay. That's theft. Or you paid them for something and they didn't give it to you. And not because they don't have it or there's some technical reason not to do it. They basically have to be like, oh, we took his money. Ah, oh, we're not going to give it to him. Ha 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 ha. In all my time in law enforcement, in 14 years, I've only had two circumstances where I had to do anything with that. One was a pawn shop. Pawn shops being a little sketchy pretty much all around the world. And for every reason that you'd ever, I don't know why you'd ever want to go to a pawn shop and deal with them. And two, one time, one time ever, guy paid at the gas station, paid with cash, walked out to the car, pump was broke. 
dude in the gas station was like, well, that pump's broke and I already put the money on that pump. He's going to have to come back tomorrow and get his refund from the manager. Listen, bro, you can't just take people's cash and then say you can't open the register and give them the cash back. He gave you a 20, give them the 20 back. It's, it's theft otherwise, right? Twice in 14 years. I go to hundreds of these things a year. And twice in 14 years, was there anything I could do other than go, uh-huh, 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 yeah, yeah, oh yeah, totally, uh-huh, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let me go talk to him. Okay, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I totally see, yeah. Okay, so it was broke when they brought it back, okay, but that's why people return it. Yeah, all right, I get it, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is a civil matter. You're gonna have to uh, take it up with Better Business Bureau or call their corporate or uh, sue them in civil court. Yeah, I know, it's not worth suing them in civil court, but that's, that's what you're gonna have to do. That's how they always go, all the time. I could write a script for new guys and they could use that script and be 99.9% .9 effective anytime there's a monetary argument between a business and a person or between two people. Sue them, sue them. The police, we're not the civil police. This is the criminal, the police are criminal. We only deal with criminal cases. If it's not a criminal incident, you don't care. Also. Don't call 911 because someone won't give you a return on the doohickey you bought at Walmart. Not only is that not what 911 is for, but nobody cares except you in the store. Nobody cares but you in the store about your returning the item and not getting the money back. You deal with the store in that. So that is but one of the chapters in Xavier Wells' book. Uh, Expert Witness, a Civilian Guides to Effective Crime Reporting. I was going to do this video as a description, like how to give a good description of an offender. If you guys would like to see that, I'm sure I'll be doing that sometime in the future because that's a good, solid training video that we can link into the book for him. I'm going to put an Amazon link for this book down below. If you're interested in it, use that link. You help the channel out a little bit, so feel free to use that link if you're interested in the book. More about this type of stuff coming up in the future, and now we're gonna take comments and questions from the Instagram live stream that I can see have been going nuts this entire video. So, let's scooch on over there. Also, I'm going to take this ridiculous plate carrier off. Ugh. Now I'm just I'm just not nearly as believable as actually being a cop. I'm not wearing a play. I'm definitely not cool anymore. I'm not wearing a play carrier. Let's go up to the top and see what everybody has to say. See if we have any topical comments and questions on this. Everybody joining, saying hi, hello, hello, hello. Matt and Roby says, check out that underwear model. Ooh, you should see me from the side. Hold on. I'll try to get high enough where you can you can see the gut. You guys will love that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. George Frontero says, quotes. My kid won't behave. Can you come scare them? Yeah, that we get that all the time. We also get uh, people bring their kid to the station and say, can you put him in a jail cell for a little while for us? No! Do you have any idea the incredible amount of liability you're asking me to take on to scare your kid? How about you learn to parent your kid? I've got two kids. I don't need your kid. I managed to teach my kids how to do things the right way. Here's a thought. Instead of plopping your kid in front of the TV and letting them play video games all day, maybe uh, enroll them in some sort of outdoor extracurricular activity. My kids are in scouts and a sport each. Plus, they go to school. Maybe you should make your kid go to school and then put them in, I don't know, basketball or soccer or something. Maybe something with good influences instead of just propping them off onto the TV or the video games and then being upset that, oh, he won't behave. I don't know why. I'm not putting him in a jail cell. Samsung MSVC said, I went on a ride along and we went to three different calls that ended up being nothing. It's infuriating. It's, listen, you call the police about whatever you want. Call the non-emergency number in your area. You can get somebody that you can talk to to see what's going on. You call 911, you're getting a clerk with a headset. He or she's job is not to give you legal advice in the 911 dispatch center. Even though they try to be like, hey, you know, this is a civil matter. They do their best. That's not their job. And a lot of the stuff... Their only recourse to be like, well, we'll send an officer out there. Which means you're taking resources away from people who actually need the police. Rieger99 says, quote, someone used my credit card two weeks ago and I'm deciding to call now. Yeah. Also, if you have a credit card fraud case, step one is call your credit card company. Cancel the charges. They will direct you from there. Unless they specifically direct you to go to the police department to make a report. You don't have to. Let me tell you something. If they do direct you to go to the police department and make a report, chances are they don't believe you and they want to lock you into that felony for making a false report. Just a little heads up. Just a little heads up. If, if, you're, if you're 
playing some scam. The reason they're sending you to the police department is because they want you to get arrested when they find out that it was actually you using your credit card. And some of them will actually investigate that. So good luck on that one. Anthony Ruiz says, only call if you have a dire emergency. Any emergency. Hey man, your car breaks down, it's stuck in traffic, you need help pushing it off the road? There's semis whizzing past? Sure, some guys would disagree with you, but sure. Call 911 and be like, hey, I'm really, I'm scared. I think something, I'm, some, I'm going to get hurt. That's fine. You're scared, you think you're going to be hurt. Even if later on it turns out to not be the case, we're used to that. We're used to like, you know, not judging things on 2020 hindsight, right? Hey, this lady didn't know what was going on. She's stuck in the middle of the road. This dude didn't know what was going on. His car was broke down. There wasn't actually anything wrong with it. It was just, you know, it was stuck in park. So I pushed the little button and pulled the lever back and pushed him off the road. He thought he was in... You know, he was, he was in a situation where he's going to get hurt. Fine. Dial 911. We'll send somebody over there. Take a, a third set of eyes and put it on that problem, or a second set of eyes, put on that problem. No problem. But if you're parked in your garage and you wake up in the morning and there's two and a half feet of snow and you have to get to work, do not call 911. That is not an emergency. I am not going to come shovel you out. That's not how this works. J Stace 42 says, I've been told numerous times by police officers to call 911 for any and all issues due to 911 lines being recorded. No. 911 is for emergencies. You don't call for everything because it's recorded. We're not your free recording service. This is not the free recorded line service. I'm literally recording this on my phone with a screen recorder that's recording all the audio and video on my phone. If you need something recorded, you have a thing that does that already. Use the thing you have. You don't tie up a 911 line. Lots of towns only have two or maybe three 911 lines, small towns. You call to tie one up because you want to you wanna lock in the business that said that you couldn't have a refund? Dude, that's a total dick move. Do not do that. This is for emergencies. Emergencies is 911, not free recorded line. I am Smith34 says the stupidest 911 call. I'll have to think about that. Maybe that'll be that'll be a good Instagram post in the future. Lvic24 says, do you have any merch available? Uh, yes, I have patches right now. The patches have been redesigned so they'll fit on the Velcro shoulder area of uh, most tactical jackets. Uh, I've sold a bunch of them already. Uh, but I think I have like 75 of each. I've got them in black and gray or black and green. So they'll match your, your green tactical jacket or your black tactical jacket or your subdued gray tactical jacket. So check those out there at freefieldtraining.com slash merch. They're $10 a piece shipped inside the United States. It's extra to ship international. So if, any, if nobody else has any comments or questions left, uh, thank you for everybody for stopping by. Uh, Link and all that is down in the description. Until next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, check out one of our other videos. Or head on over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here.